Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with our chainsaw. So in the last uh, tutorial, we created this battery pack, and the previous one, we sort of did a, a rough blocking, so we've got some extra bits here. So we're almost nearly done with this. We've just got a couple of extra things that we need to do. Um, so this is the chain. We'll probably leave the chains last, and um, do the, the wires probably last as well. And we need to fill in some of these gaps. But in this one, we're going to create the toggle switch to turn turn this on. We're probably not going to see it that much, but it might be a tiny, it's a small detail that you might notice. So I'm just going to go to my panel's orthographic front. And just select my camera and go to my image plane, import my images. And I'm just going to go to my reference. And I'm just going to look for my toggle switch. There are a couple in here. I think this is the one so I'm going to use. So I've got this push one that I thought maybe cheese, but it looks a bit small. So you could model this one. And there's a similar one in here as well. There we are. There's a little bit more detail in this one, but what I'm going to go with, I'm just going to go with this first one. So we're not going to see loads of it, and it's, it gives us exactly what we need. So I'm just going to hide my chainsaw, my prop. And we're just going to model this from the view that we see here. So I'm going to work on my orthographic, and I'm just going to, we're not going to worry too much about scale, because we'll do that at the end. So I'm just going to make a cube. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna match because we're at a perspective. We can't really use all of these edges to sort of get a, a, a rough estimate. So we have to pick one. So I'm just gonna pick this far edge. If I just change my to X-ray, you can see through. And I'm just gonna match this length here. Then sort of match the width. Cool. So we got something. Oh, I can't read it because it looks because we're seeing it at an angle. We have to do a certain amount of. You kind of have to see how it is, and this is something that you can sort of practice, and you'll get used to it after a while. Because sometimes you just won't have very good reference. You might have one bit of reference or a drawing, so. Sometimes you've just got to try and get it as close from how you can see it. And it will just train your eye for modeling as well. So we've got this basic box shape. And what we'll do, we'll just block it out. Um, and we've sort of got this, what looks like a an end cap or a spacer. So I'm just going to duplicate this. That's that bit. Then we've also got this metal part, which is slightly larger. Don't worry about these gaps. We'll worry. About, we'll sort that out afterwards. And you've got these two prongs at the back, so I'm just going to make a cylinder as well. Just going to rotate this 90 degrees. I'm just going to scale this down so it looks about right. Because we've got these washers here, so it's kind of, it's not as big. As it looks with the washer. So I'm just trying to get this, it can be quite hard to guesstimate, but. Probably a little bit smaller than that got the washers that sort of bring it up to about here probably doesn't come out too far I'm just going to duplicate this 
And this is going to be sort of a rough toggle switch. So what we can do is just duplicate that. Obviously these are probably, because we're only seeing it in one, in our orthographic, these are probably not correct in the width, so. So we've got our rough blocking, it doesn't have to be amazing. It just gives us a good idea of what we're going to make. And we can probably reuse these bolts from our other models, so we don't actually need to make that. And the only thing we need to make is this part. So let's go to our perspective, press F and have a look. So now we can see what we've sort of got. So it's looking about right, I think. Maybe it's a little bit. I think that's probably about right. Because we're going to see it in a... The perspective is going to look a bit odd because obviously it doesn't look like that. But as long as we keep it in keeping with the... So it doesn't look too strange, basically. So a lot of this is... You can do this by eye, but... So I'm just going to change these. Hopefully this shouldn't be a... Uh, take too long. So I do want to kind of finish up on this so we can move off the modelling and get going. I'm taking quite a took a little bit of a break over Christmas so got a lot of uh, to catch up on cool so we've got our rough switch so now let's go into sort of up resing it so it's, it's a pretty simple model it's basically a box we're not going to see much of this so what I do want to do is Select these edges, good modeling. I actually want to, because they are quite rounded. I've seen now we need to fix this on the inside. So I'm just going to isolate that with Control 1. I'm just going to use my multi cut to. So what I can do is set this edge. In fact, actually what I'll do first, because we're also going to be beveling this, I do like to extrude and just have a, a small extrusion in. So when we do bevel around this edge, there's not any uh, sort of poles or nodes. So now what I'll do, I'll just use my multi-cut. Join these edges. So I hope you guys had a nice break over Christmas or whether if you're still on your break. Or uh, if you're just still working, it's quite difficult with this. It's been an interesting year with this pandemic. So you want to make sure that you definitely get them when you do these cuts. You definitely make sure you get it on the vertice that's highlighted, otherwise you'll add an extra vertex for that we don't want. So let's just double check I've not done that. Cool, so that's looking good. So I'm just going to go to my edges. And in fact, before I do that, because this is basically the same piece but it looks like there's an edge I'm actually gonna delete this now control D duplicate this so I don't have to do it again also we could probably do this in a texture it's very likely that will like a lot of this stuff we're not going to see but it's good for um modeling practice. So I've selected those edges. I'm just going to go to bevel. It's going to be quite a tight bevel. So if I press 
minus three, it's smoothed. So probably actually want to I'll do that. Yeah, let's bevel that. And you can sort of see it's got a funny shape because we need to add some sort of supporting edges. Which I'm pretty sure I'd do it in all. This might be the first time I've actually properly mentioned the supporting edges, but I do it in pretty much all my models anyway. And we'll just put there we go. So I got a nice round shape. Cool. So let's do the same for this. Which is bevel that. much. I'll just add those supporting edges. Cool. So hopefully this should be a fairly quick model for us to make. I'm going to go a little bit faster than I usually do. So, and again, I could probably delete this and reuse this. So we don't need to keep modeling new stuff. If we can reuse it, we will. It's basically the same. We just need to scale it up slightly. Let's just put our smooth on, just so we can see. So we've got the smooth this, sorry. So we've got this sort of rough shape. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a switch, not a complex model. It's just, it's just a small, small detail that we need to add. So we've done these base bits. Now we've got this section here. So we can model this in if we want, but it's going to be so far away. It'd just be easier for us to use a, a texture. So we're going to keep this quite basic. So all we need to worry about is we've got this sort of gap in here and we can put this in a normal or a bump map because it's going to be so far away. You're not going to notice it really if it's modeled or uh, textured. So what I'm going to do is go to my attributes editor, uh, add a Cap. And that seems to be at a reasonable size, so I'm just going to isolate that. Now I'm going to select my faces, and I'll select all the middle ones, and all the middle ones on the other side. And because that's hidden inside the geometry, we can actually just select that and delete it. And I'm just going to select my edges. And it looks like it's just extruded in. Just something like this. And we can do another extrude. No, because that's what because then effectively there's gonna be a ball in there. So I'm just gonna select my edges. I'm just gonna bevel them. Uh, 
it should be a fairly quick basic model because when like I said we're not gonna see a lot of it. We're only really gonna see a tiny little bit and it's we're so close to finishing this um sword so cool. And so it's pretty easy for me now to make a sphere. Just gonna make a sphere. And I'm just gonna hold V and snap it to the center of that. Just make sure I'm in the center. Then I can rotate this uh, 90 degrees. I'm just going to go to my polysphere and just bring down the subdivisions a lot because we don't need that many. Let's do 12, 12. At least it's an equal number. So I'm actually going to duplicate this. Scale this up because that goes in there. Cool. So scale up a tiny bit. Now I can get rid of that, and now I've got these two spheres. So now if I isolate that, so what I can do now is, because these are both the same, just select the faces, delete those, delete those, and because it gets slightly smaller, in fact what I'll do, I'll just mesh combine these. and delete that. Oh, make sure I have just deleted something behind by accident. Oh, so I just select these edges. Modeling bridge. And now I've got a pretty basic switch. So what I want to do, I want to make sure I bevel this. Because it's, otherwise it will just be a soft edge. We want it to be quite tight. So yeah, that's pretty much what we'll do. We'll just add a division in there. So now what we need to do is really get rid of these triangles. Select them all on top, delete. Select my edge, hold shift and fill hole. Let's go to my multi-cut and now I can just Cut across the edges. But if I press three now, there's probably going to be some slight weirdness in it, so I'm just going to slightly relax. Relax the topology so it's not so square at the top. Now all we need to do is do the same for the bottom. Although we're not going to see it, it's still good practice to get rid of any unwanted triangles. Just hold shift and right click fill hole, multi cut. And I'm not too bothered about it because we're not going to see it. So, if we just... so now we've got our sort of toggle switch. And now we just need to make these 
because um, we can reuse these from the previous model. So if you've been following along, you can see that we've already got Tough Control D and Shift P. Because otherwise, I'll just be I'll just be modeling it over again. We don't really need to. And if you haven't, if you're just following this tutorial, there's a tutorial on the modeling of the nuts and bolts. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to modify the one that we have already made. Because if you've already made it, you don't need to make it again. You can just modify something that you currently already have, and it will save you time. There's there's no need to continually remodel things if you already have it. I'm just going to go to my rigging and just go straight point. So that's in the center. Delete that. So this is going to be good for us for scale as well. So I'm going to just match those rotations. Scale this up so that bolt matches the sort of edge. I'm just going to delete this center one. So I can scale this whole thing, but when you scale it, you see that you flatten the bevel as well, which we don't really want to do. We just want to. Squeeze it down a bit. So I'm just going to select all these inside bits and grow my selection. Press G to repeat. Now hold Shift and transform component. I want to push this just do these bits first. Just scale up. Scale this down slightly so we see some of this. What we can do, we can scale it a little bit. That's not too much of a problem. Duplicate that. This is definitely a bit smaller, isn't it? It's always about adjusting to the correct size or whatever looks correct. Because now we can just make this sort of on and off sort of signal thing because then that's going to screw in between Take this. Should be fine. It's such a small detail. I 
and we can sort of make this on off thing. So I am just going to make that from a cylinder. Hopefully this should be a So I realize I've, I have spent, because I do want to be quite quite thorough in everything that I make, but also practicality is really important as well. Like, if you don't need to model it, don't model it, but this is kind of not what I was trying to aim for. I was just trying to get, get a nice, give everyone a nice overview of what or how to do stuff. If that makes sense but it's kind of what I like to do as well I like to do a bit of overkill so I like modeling basically so I'm just gonna change my subdivision until it sort of meets roughly the correct sort of thickness here so I'm just gonna extrude them out So I've got two, three, four. One, two, three. So I've got three at the top, four at the bottom. That means we've got an odd number. So let's go to 26. Two, three, four. I'm just going to scale it out. And they go about as far out. Cool. So if I just minimize that, I'm just going to select all the faces. Delete them. Control E. Just do. Oh, it doesn't look like that. Control E. Okay, that's one. So I'm just going to extrude that in. Because we've extruded this out, broken the the edge loop. In fact, let's undo that. That's probably an easier way to do this. So what I can do is. Gone. Sorry, this is going a bit. Can't do that because. No, we have to do it this way. Sorry about that. That's selecting the edge loop now. Okay, cool. Just scale that in. And we're not going to see this, so I'm not hugely bothered about finishing it off. So if I press one, it's going to be hidden in the geo, so it only really matters so much if you're going to start sculpting stuff, but I think it's very unlikely that you're going to want to sculpt this. So some of this we won't even need to smooth because it's so small you won't even notice. Just that just a bevel will sometimes will be fine. But I'm just going to go around and bevel all the edges that we need to. Because we probably won't smooth this. A bevel will probably be just fine for the distance. That's probably why we're going a little bit crazy with the bevel on this.
Hmm. Cool. So, oh no, we haven't. I was almost about to say we're done, but um, we've just got to do these little bits at the back. And what we can do is make a cylinder. This might be the one of the quicker tutorials that I've done. I probably will do a, a series of a fast fast ones as well because these long ones are quite long so what I am going to do I'm just going to scale this Okay, and I could boolean this if I want. Um, there's nothing wrong with boolean, booleaning as long as you clean it up afterwards. Um, you go through, you go through the same amount of. It's sometimes the same amount of work really to just do it manually with the cleanup. gonna make edge loops for all the, the vertices and if I just have my wireframe more shaded on it'd be easier to see I'm just gonna hold V and only in the Y axis I'm gonna snap it to these positions of the vertices only in the X and Y, not in the Z, otherwise you'll end up making... It doesn't matter so much, I guess, because we can just scale it if it goes a bit funny, which I'm sure it probably will. You might select the, the middle bit by accident, it happens, it's fine. Sometimes it's good to make the mistakes so you know how to fix them. And I definitely make a lot of mistakes sometimes, <laughs> but it really doesn't matter. Cool. So I could delete that. Now I've got this whole shape, and I could just delete these. So control E. Just add a little edge loop. And I could, don't even have to do that to the other side, I can just delete all the rest. There's no point in me doing it again. And I can select these sides. Because the holes are a little because I've made the edge loop, the holes a little bit smaller, so now I can I imagine these are probably a little bit like that. And I can just scale this up. Let's just control E. I'm just going to freeze, transform, delete all the history. Oh, we can just pull that out. If I just isolate that to select all the edges, like you don't have to model this if you don't want to for the model, it's just I'm just trying to go through as thoroughly as I can for the whole thing because the next. 
thing that we'll need to do is is UV all of this. So it could take quite a while. Some weird stuff going on here, but I doubt we'll ever notice it. It's fine. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Move that across there. Delete that one. And now we have our pretty basic switch. So we can go into way more detail if we wanted to, but we're not. We're really not going to see it that much. It's just going to be a tiny little thing, and it's uh, yeah. So it's pretty much done. So what we can do is just we'll just select all this and just group it. Just call it a switch. GRP. I'll just freeze it. Delete all the history. And what we'll do, we'll just place it as well. We may as well place it in the scale up because we know we're at the completely wrong scale. But we can, I'll try and do this after every sort of little thing that we model so we get a good idea of. Obviously, that's absolutely huge. These are tiny little toggle switches, so. I guess it would be like that. We can figure out how to mount that. We can have it like this. I don't know. It's, it's like a lot of this is you can just. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. Like a lot of this is the creative sort of side where you can just sort of just do what you like, really. Um, you may have a better design than I have, and you might want to do something differently. So, I think even something like that might be quite cool. But then we've got to figure out how to mount it. Um, So maybe the easiest sort of thing would be to mount it like that. And it can sort of rest on, on the batteries and we can tuck all the wiring in. Cool. So yeah, we're pretty much done with this tutorial. So yeah, so if you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.